In this video, we will talk about three probability distribution. Properties of uh, est estimators depend on their sampling distributions. And that's why understanding probability distributions is important. Here we will talk about three univariate distributions used quite often in practice. Two of them, Poisson and Binomial, are used for counts and are discrete. And the third one is the well-known normal distribution that is used for continuous measurements. We will again illustrate some of the characteristics of these distributions and how can we use them in MATLAB. The first distribution that we will explore is called Poisson. Poisson distribution has one parameter, usually named lambda, and it is a rate. So a Poisson distribution is used for counting events, usually rare events, number of errors, number of people arriving at some place, and so on. And this parameter, lambda, the rate, defines its mean and its variability. So just to illustrate how we can use the Poisson distribution in MATLAB, I've defined lambda to be 5, and I've used the, the, the function make this to make a distribution called Poisson with that parameter. And what I'm going to do now is to plot this distribution using the stem plot. The reason why I'm using the stem plot is because this is a discrete distribution, so it's a point mass probability function that has these probabilities for values of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So as we can see, this distribution that has parameter 5 peaks around 5 and then decreases at either side. To illustrate how the parameter controls not only the location but the spread of the distribution as well, I will plot the same distribution with parameters 5, 15, 30, and 60. So there we have it. The, the first plot is the same as the first one that we did. And as lambda increases in that direction, we can see that the distribution becomes increasingly symmetric and has higher peaks. To see how different realizations of a sample from this population can see, I will plot 10 samples from of size 20 from a population with parameter 5. So here we go. These are all samples of size 20 from a population that is Poisson with parameter 5. So we can see that roughly the means are around 5 of all of them, but there is a variability around that mean. And also there is a variability in the behavior of the samples. The next distribution that we will explore briefly is the binomial distribution. This distribution has two parameters, n and p. The binomial distribution is used to model number of successes in n trials. For instance, the number of faulty parts in a batch of size n. So the range of the distribution is 0 to n, the number of elements in the trial, and p tells you the probability of observing a unit with the characteristic. So again, to explore how a typical binomial distribution looks like, I will plot it with parameters n equals 10 and p equals 25. So as we can see, this is again a discrete distribution with the heights of these stems representing the probability for n x equals 1, 0, 1, 
up to 10 in this case because it cannot go further than that. And we can see that this distribution peaks around two or three and then it tapers down quite quickly. And this is because for n fixed, p controls the mean of the distribution. The smaller p, the smaller the mean. To illustrate how this works, I will plot the same distribution for four different values of p, 0.15, 0.3, 0.60, and 0.85. And now we can see that the peak of this distribution moves towards the right, towards the end of the possible values that the random quantity can take as p increases. And when p is around 0.5, this starts to look roughly symmetric. So p controls the mean and the spread. We can also see some realizations of this distribution by doing exactly the same experiment as before. I will take 10 samples with n equals 20, sorry, n equals 10 and p equals 0.4, and then just box plot the samples. So there we go. Again, the mean in this case is around 4, and we can see that different samples, although they will be centered roughly at the same value, will have very different shapes. And we will now finally explore the Gaussian distribution, or normal. This distribution has two parameters, mu and sigma squared, Mu is the mean, and that defines the location, and sigma square is the variance, and that defines the scale of the distribution. So again, to illustrate how the shape of this distribution, I will plot the Gaussian distribution with mean 0 and variance 1, which is the standard normal distribution. You can see this distribution is symmetric. It's range, it can take any real value in the real, in, in the real line, it is symmetric, and it peaks exactly at the mean. Now we have two parameters, one that controls the location, the mean, and the other one that controls the scale, the variance. So first I will vary the location to illustrate how the mean can control where the center of this distribution lies. So I will plot this distribution with the same variance, 1, and means of 0, minus 2, and 2. There we go. So basically, now we can see graphically that what varying the mean does is just shifting this curve and centering at the mean value. We can now explore what is the effect of varying the variance. The variance is a positive real number, so I will vary the variance from 1 to 2 and a half, and I will set the mean to 0. So now we can see that varying the variance changes the spread of the distribution. The higher the variance, the higher the spread. Finally, we can explore how different realizations, how different samples of a Gaussian distribution might look like. In this case, I'm sampling from a Gaussian distribution with mean 0 and variance 2. So there we go. All of the means of these samples are roughly the same, but then again we have uh, some variability in the shape of each one of the samples. These distributions, coupled with the data, are the basis of statistical inference.